So I just wanted to show you guys this, uh, my day-to-day -day job. Um, this is kind of cool. This is a municipal raw water intake system for a city out in, uh, in the province where I work here. So I'm doing some work here today. And I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a tour to see kind of what goes on behind the scenes in a water system. Um, this is one station, it's part of many, um, that make up a water system to get you guys drinking water to your houses. So uh, I'll kind of give you guys a little walkthrough. Um, this building here actually takes raw water up from a pond or a creek and uh, it goes through some UV disinfecting, gets some chlorine and it goes out to the reservoir uh, for potable water for you guys to drink. So um, give you guys a little tour here. So this is a big control panel right here, PLC control panel and it's got a bunch of buttons and switches on it. Exhaust fan, so you got HVAC here and then um, here you got some valve control and here you got a little touch screen HMI. So you can kind of see what's going on in the system if you want to. So uh, this is a, a UV intake they call and we got some process variables so you can see um, turbidity values, uh, pressure, flow rates. So I have the station turned off right now because I'm uh, just doing some work on it. So the flow rate zero, but uh, yeah, you can see all the values there. And inside the sucker is uh, basically a PLC control panel. PLC, programmable logic computer. It's basically just uh, a hardened industrial computer. It's kind of like your laptop, but it, uh, it has what you call IO inputs and outputs on it to control things. So uh, it's basically just a really expensive computer because it has the word industrial attached to it. So anything with the word industrial on it is about 500% more than anything else that you'd buy commercially. But um, you know, you got, you got your power supplies here, you got network switches because uh, these days most devices, um, everything runs on ethernet or network. Uh, we got, uh, right here it's hard to see, but we got fiber going into it. So we got a fiber optic cable going down to a booster station. So this this intake it, it, it draws it draws from a creek and it sends it down the line. And at the bottom of the line, it has to boost it back up the hill into a reservoir because the reservoir is up on a hill. So this intake supplies a booster station with some pumps in it. So they have to communicate together to to coordinate the water supply to the booster. So we got fiber running between the two buildings for comms. And uh, this is actually what I added in here today. This is uh, basically a remote I/O module. This is a Snyder Advances module. And what that does basically is it just it takes a signal from a flow meter, uh, an analog signal from a flow meter, and it digitizes it into something we called heart and uh, don't worry if all these acronyms are driving you crazy um, I'll, I'll explain them kind of you know as we talk about things here I, I'm hoping to do some more videos like this kind of show you guys the inner workings of a system but here let's, let's kind of start with the basics so got this big pipe here and uh, down here we got it's hard to see that pipe goes through the wall and that comes right from a creek and it comes up here got an isolation valve the big handle on it so you can open and close it manually we got pressure so this is head pressure from the creek so we got about 15 psi but you know in a, in a, in a 12 inch pipe so that's you know that's a bit of water and then here we got a rotary action uh, rotary valve here uh, what does this one go to? I believe this is for the, This is the chlorine injection system So raw water comes in from the creek Then here we got chlorine that comes in through this valve into the raw water pipe So we chlorinate the raw water as it comes into the system now at the top here we got a uh, um, uh, what is it? An air valve, an air purging valve. So you get any air in here, basically the air will blow out the top of there. So it's an air release valve. Raw water comes around here and uh, basically it splits into, t into three. That one's not connected to anything, so that's for the future. But it goes this way and it goes this way. 
through these valves. Now these valves are either open or closed. The PLC controls those. And they go into these shiny little stainless things. You see those? Those are UV reactors. And what they have in them is a bunch of powerful UV light that blasts the water and it kills bacteria like Giardia, beaver fever, all that sort of stuff you don't want in your drinking water. And here, this is the head unit of the reactor. This is the power source uh, for the lights. I believe these are 600 volt AC lights in there. And, uh, you know, there's ballast and stuff in there that power big. They kind of look like fluorescent tubes. But um, the water goes through there and it has a certain amount of contact time that the civil engineers deem necessary to disinfect the water as it flows through there. And so you got two reactors. So normally only one's running at a time, so you got fail safe, you got backup. But if you ever wanted to run the station at really high flows, one reactor might not be enough to, uh, to kill and disinfect the water. So water comes up through the reactor, comes out, goes through this valve here. Um, goes through this valve in the top. Now it's called UV treated water. Notice how it was raw water before. Now all of a sudden it's UV treated goes through this flow meter. This is a mag flow meter, so it uses um, a magnetic field and it can measure the ions in the water as it flows through the system. And it, you can actually get flow of something like that. Mag flow meters are really cool because they don't actually impede the flow of the pipe. There's no turbine or anything in there. It just uses a magnetic field. So because it's magnetic, it won't work on anything that is uh, like pure water with no ions on it. It has to have some sort of uh, ferric ions in it, some sort of iron in it for the magnetic field to work. Okay, this here actually, I was wrong. The hypochlorite, the chlorine doesn't go through here. This is a sampling port for uh, the water turbidity. So you can measure the turbidity of the creek to see how dirty the water is. That's really important because then we know how to treat and we know how to disinfect based on the turbidity levels. Um, this is where the chlorine gets into it. So hypochlorite, we use about 12% hypochlorite solution. So it comes through the flow meter, UV disinfected, right through here, chlorine, 12% chlorine solution gets dosed into there. Comes back down here, goes through this flow control valve, FCV, and comes back down through the pipe and uh, basically goes down outside and out into the booster station down the hill. So that, this is a little, little small treatment system for a raw, raw water intake. Um, this is our turbidity meter here, so this measures the turbidity. Here we got a pressure transmitter, so this is measuring pressure. Um, pressure line going into the back here, so the pressure comes around and it's measuring pressure right here from the sample port. So this is, this is uh, discharge pressure. And here we got our UV controllers here. So these UV controllers basically control the lamps. So lamps, uh, the warm up time, and they also change how many ballasts are on in those UV reactors depending on the flow. So these things get flow, and the higher flow, the more UV light you, you need, so it turns more lamps on. And uh, basically, all this is coordinated through the PLC. But uh, if you walk over here, you can actually see this is the chlorine room. And those are hypochlorite dosing pumps. Those ones are made by Prominent. Uh, they're decent pumps. And you got our 12% hypochlorite solution in here. Focus. Focus. Our hypochlorite. And we got our, our dosing board there with all our valves and things like that. But so those dosing pumps are controlled by the PLC. So what happens is that magnetic flow meter talks to the PLC and measures the flow. What happens now is the PLC turns these on and doses the chlorine based on the flow of the station. So when the station has more flow, those chlorine dosing pumps run a little bit faster. So it's, <coughs> it's pretty simple, not much to it, but uh, nothing's cheap either. You know, a fairly expensive system. I'm not sure how much this one costs to, to build. This is a retrofit upgrade. You can see an old existing building, but new pipes and instrumentation in it. So it's pretty typical. Anyhow, I think I'll, I'll come up and show you guys the creek so you can have an idea of what actually goes on in the intake. Let's, let's see, what's, uh, see what's happening this time of year. So this is the intake here. You see the creek running in the background here, filling this up. Some more water coming in from that creek, filling it up too. 
And right there we got a, uh, I think that's what we call a Johnson screen basically, just filters out any rocks or anything. Oh man, I ran up this hill, I can barely breathe. There's a little valve here actually that opens and closes uh, the port to that intake building we were just in. So it's really not much to it. Just a little pond, nice clear water and turn into drinking water there once it passes through the system. Not bad for November in Canada. Just remember, don't forget to lock the gate. See you next time.